All right. And as we all found out now with COVID-19 involved in our lives and everybody's trying to be socially uh, distanced uh, and sort of thing. I sort of like I was interested in seeing what he says on on the signs on 430. You also what he said? It says social distance. Two seconds behind the other car. <laughs> so I thought, well, that's good. That's a good idea. And six feet apart when you're standing. And so we're looking at that. I don't know who else we might get with us, but uh, we're looking. We welcome the Joneses here. We welcome John in the midst of ours. And uh, I think Mark and uh, the Trembles, they were going to pick up children or something. And so. They will uh, probably look at us on Zoom here in a bit. We said, hey, there's Kathy Sue. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Oh, she got anyway, the book I gave you, I hope that you'll look at it. And, and just for a moment, Her name, my God. Kathy Sue Kathy has one, Sue. I think. All right, it looks like this, okay? And all of you have one. I'm showing it to the Zoom folks. But it's a good book. It's a marvelous book written by Rick Warren, and uh, he put a lot of work into it. Uh, and uh, and I was surprised he only charged us what he did for it. I thought it would have been more than that, but we're thankful for all gifts we can receive in this life. Uh, and it has a lot of content in it. And our first section, it, it deals with understanding your study guide, and it also, you get to read that. And it also talks about using the video curriculum. Well, interesting, I looked at his video, we do have that. But all he's doing is repeating what he has written here, okay? So I'm saying, okay, Let's take our 25 minutes. Yes. No, I didn't see her. Is her car out there? She has that, uh, what is it, a Cherokee? No, it's a uh, Or a black, sort of like a Cherokee. Yeah. Anyway. I didn't see it. Isn't that her wallet? I don't yeah, know where she went. Belt, though, but it was here. Not her that, that is her purse, though, yes, right? Okay. I didn't see her Anyway. Purse. Yeah, but it probably has her driver's license. Yeah. Just go ahead and let the door lock thing. Uh, take the chances with it, I guess. Open, maybe. Uh, if you see her coming in, tell her to lock the inside when she comes in. Yes, sir. No worries. But anyway, I was looking at the video. is twenty. Uh, basically, for each session, is about 25 so minutes. Funny. And he's oh, repeating yeah, uh, those things that you see here. No uh, and no. also, uh, he talks about, and, and, he, and I'm writing my sermons to coincide with this so that you can take the outline, which by the way, this coming Sunday, they will not be crowded on one side like I had them last Sunday. I, you have them like a book. They can open up like this and read them. And so we're doing it a little different for you because I looked at it and I said, that's confusing, Bob. They can't understand that and see. But anyway, if you look at those outline notes that, that you may have written, and there's a spot in here for that. It's on page one, if you'll follow, excuse me, page seven in here. And uh, and he talks about checking in as a group, and we've checked in. I see two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. I see 13. I have a friend of mine, ours, and I asked if there were 13 people at the table, should we get up and leave? Because <laughs> if you remember correctly, our Lord was sitting at a table, and there were 13 at the table. Uh, and so you look at that and think on it for those lines. But anyway, there's, there's a key verse in all of it. And you're gonna, we're going to go through all of that. There's a, a, and the video lesson is just a repetition of what you're going to be reading. So we'll just handle that. The bad thing about a video, you don't get to, to have any dialogue in it. You just have to sit there and listen. And I want you to be able to dialogue with us when we come to these parts uh, in the Bible study, in the study on prayer. And then there's a section on discovery questions that you'll get into. And, uh, and then there's a section on putting it into practice. In other words, we're talking about praying. And this coming Sunday, I'm preaching on a beginner's guide to prayer. All right. And I may print out for you what I did before is about nine steps of something that help you pray in your daily devotions. And the other part is a daily prayer journal that you're going to have in here as you can see it. So we're going to be looking at that today and thinking about prayer, the purpose of prayer. Why do we have prayer? Uh, you know, you got to realize we're going to talk about, and in your book you're going to find out there's four statements in here of what prayer is, it is an act of, and we're going to get into that, uh, let you understand where we're coming from. But I want to welcome you today to 40 Days of Prayer, uh, and a lot of things will happen. I like 40 days. Do y'all know where that comes from? It's biblical. You know, our Lord was in the wilderness, you know, 
there were a lot of things that happened in 40 days and so that's an idea so if you and i today if you and i traveled all over the world how many of you traveled all over the world all right in traveling all over the world have you been to any country that people don't pray because they may not be praying to, to god or jesus christ but they're praying to buddha or they're praying to allah or they're praying to something as a matter of fact how many of you in, how many of you history buffs of american history what were the what did the native americans pray to they had all of these different gods that they prayed to so you gotta realize god has instilled that somehow some way in us so every continent that you and i would get on today uh that people pray and uh so it, it, and they pray different ones of course but the wonderful thing is god has given this to us he didn't give it to the dogs all right the dogs are going to pray he didn't give it to the ants he didn't give it to the cats he didn't give it to the cows they don't pray he has given it to us and so you and i have this marvelous privilege a great privilege as well as a great responsibility of absolutely having this conversation and being able to be with god and talk about it so i so how do you uh say things you want to say to god this is what we're going to look at going at and prayer is god's idea it wasn't mine and yours it was god and we're going to see that as we go through the scriptures that rick warren has put together he's done a marvelous job of bringing it out but if god didn't want to talk to us he would have never invented prayer for us or he would have never told us all right so when you think about I love what one writer said, the end of self, okay, you know what that is, right? The end of self is the beginning of God. And so that's where we're getting to. So the more dependent you and I are on God, the less we are involved with ourselves and we are moving out and moving beyond that. So, uh, you know, that's there. John, we're going to see on, uh, so turn the page. Uh, page 11 turn to page 11 and you see that's weekend sermon notes you didn't realize you're gonna have to take sermons notes did you all right uh and so you see that uh and so you get a chance to you can go home and do you, how many of you still have your outline from sunday if you do then sit down and, and go over that and set those notes that, that we're dealing with because it's a situation of us wanting to grow and we grow in our faith by talking with God through prayer. And that's that part of it. So you're there. And then if you turn to page 13, uh, you will see uh, there the purpose of prayer. And that's where we're getting started from this and go and look at it. And I, I love what he says, and I, I'm repeating, that prayer is God's idea. you see that on page 14. Uh, he, if he didn't want to hear from us, he wouldn't have brought prayer to us, would he? He wouldn't have invited you and me to pray. And God wants to hear from you. How many times have you ever wondered, God, I want to pray, but I don't know what to say. I'm reminded of Robert Schuller. I don't know if y'all remember him or not in the Crystal Cathedral. He was in Japan, all right? He and his wife were in Japan on a mission, thinking that he was speaking all over the world. And he got a phone call that his daughter was in a ski accident in utah and she was injured and they were taken to the hospital and while he and his wife were coming on a red eye from japan to the united states they had to go into surgery and remove her leg all right they couldn't salvage it well here he is you think robert Schuler would know how to pray right he did he said i walked in the men's room washed my face and wanted to pray and could not pray and all I could say was, oh, and out of that came, hallelujah, all right? And so when we think about praying, I want us to get it to be a part of our life. It's got to be a part of us, and, and we're going to do that, I hope. See, God wants to hear from us, and, and, and the reason he wants to hear from us, he loves us. We keep forgetting that. Uh, I, I, get, I get really put out with what's transpiring in our church universal in the world today is that we forget that God loves us in spite of our stupidity. He still loves us and we're going to get there. And so when you think of it, he loves us, he cares, he cares about every 
detail of mind in your life. It's, it's important to us, for us to know that. And so when you and I think of this and wonder about it, we get to the point of it. And there it says, four primary, are you on page 14? Four primary, all right, purposes for prayer. Have you ever thought about that at all? All right, and it's got a blank line there, right? Yeah. Now, how many of you have pencils? All right, and or a pen. So you want to write in the blank, all right? When we get there. The thing about it is, one of the very first things that you and I see is that it talks about you and me having involved ourselves to the understanding that we are to dedicate. In other words, prayer is an act of dedication. We're dedicating ourselves. Now look at there in your passage that, that Rick Warren would go into great details about it. But I'm going to get into it to some degree there in John 15. By the way, if you will take the book of John and you will take chapter 14, 15, 16, and 17 and sort of make them the area that you want to be in, God has really got a lot to say to us in those chapters about prayer. He says, listen to what he says. And I like this one because when we were at Concord, what you know what you know what kind of grapes they, they make your grape juice out of, right? Concord grapes, right? So we had, and when we were at Concord, our theme song was, uh, the, our theme was that he says, I am the vine, you are the branches. But we also did, do you remember the commercials about the raisins dancing? Oh, and, uh, you know, and so we, we had that and we couldn't finish it because we would get into it. But so he says, I'm the vine, you're the branch. What does that mean? When you realize that God is the vine, you're the branch, you, you and I can't exist without the vine. So we're attached to it. We're dedicated to him and we're there. And so he says, if you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Now, I was just in a session with one of our people wanting to know, how do I bear more fruit? How do I do the thing that I need to be doing as a follower of Christ, as a Christian? And so here we are looking at it. You got to dedicate ourselves. We have to be involved with it. We have to dedicate ourselves for every day of 24-7, 365, of taking a time and setting aside and do nothing but converse with God. And that We have to dedicate ourselves to that. Because he goes up and says, apart from me, you can do nothing. In other words, we don't give God credit for where we are. Have we? I, mean, I, I know that we sang Sinatra song, I did it my way. Uh, and then Venable over in North Little Rock wrote and rewrote it and said, I did it God's way. Y'all remember that. But y'all don't remember that, I think. But anyway, uh, and so if you remain in, you know, if you do not remain in me, you're like a branch that has been thrown away and withers. And such branches are picked up, thrown into the fire and burned. And if you remain in me and my word remains in you, ask whatever. Listen to what he says. The major issue we have is we don't ask. We don't ask. And a lot of times we think we're asking, but look what he says. If you remain in me, I will. It will be given unto you. In other words, you're going, we're going to find out later. He says, "Ask in my name." All right. So we look at this and think on the lines when you realize that we're dedicating ourselves to God. Uh, and, and so, if you remain in me, I will remain in you. But how far have we moved away from remaining in Christ? I'm not talking about us individually. I'm talking about us as overall followers of Christ. We have not stepped in, you know. And don't get me there. I can preach a week on that. And you don't want that today. So when you realize that that's the first thing you and I have to do, we have to be dependent. But being dependent means that we have to dedicate ourselves to being involved. In, in other words, it isn't easy to be in prayer every day. You have to make that time. You have to set aside. You, and that's not easy. How many of you have been on certain diets that says, okay, for this length of time, you can't eat one of these, and you, and you, 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 you don't want to do it. You want to nibble, right? Uh, and so you don't want But here we are. We have to set aside some time. And that's what he's saying to you and me. And the next part, he says, a prayer is an act of, guess what? you got dedication, right? 
when you what is a prayer when you two are talking back and forth across the table what do you do you communicate and so prayer is an act of communication we are communicating with God we have to get ourselves there it's sort of like I, I was remembering my old days in the Navy and I was in the radio shack and I would hear da -da 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 and, and you would hear that and all of a sudden you know hey that's so-and-so calling me he wants to converse he wants to communicate all right or I'm trying to pick up Fox in Washington DC and we're out in the Atlantic and I'm not getting anywhere and all of a sudden a vessel outside of Anchorage Alaska says hey Will it? I pick you up. I can get Fox. I can get Fox. Let me transfer it. And so the communication goes. And so that's what happened. But you realize, you and I don't have to have another vessel halfway around the world to pick up our signal to converse with God. We have that right. He says, "I no longer call you servants, because a servant does not know his master's business." Instead, I've called you friend. Now that covers a lot, doesn't it? He, you know, he all of a sudden, I call you friends. For everything that I've learned from my father, listen to what he says, I have made known to you. Have you listened to what he's made known to us? I have trouble at times, don't you? I have trouble at times thinking, oh, you're talking to me, Lord? <laughs> I was just talking to, to a, a member a while ago, and the comment was, I talked to God, but I don't, I don't hear him answering me. And I said, sit still and be silent. And she said, I did. And he said, no. <laughs> and I said, the then what he's telling you is, the that's not the way. <laughs> Let's look at it in a different way. And he goes on to say, I call you friends. For everything I've learned from my father, I've made known to you. In other words, Jesus has told them what he knew from the father. And then listen to what he says. You did not choose me. You didn't think that, did you? Now, when you went and joined the church, you chose to join the church, right? Did you really? Or were you chosen and led to join the church? Tsunami, you know, all right? But he says, you did not choose me, but I chose you. And look what he said. Appointed you to go and do what? Bear fruit. Uh-oh. I, I, I don't know where you are, but I walk in the mornings. A lot of times I don't see where I have gone. Because a lot of times I do it before daylight. And then I went one, side, one day I went after daylight and said, oh, I got flowers here. I didn't see those before. But the fact being is when I'm walking, I'm talking to God, all right? I'm conversing with God. I'm dedicating that two miles or whatever I get done to being in conversation and in communication with God. And my question to myself is, and I don't know how you are, Gary, but at times I ask myself, am I doing what I, am I producing fruit? Is there, and if I am producing fruit, is it better than green persimmon? You know, or is it as tasty as a delicious plum? I, I, I don't know. And so I think that's my prayer every day. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. So when well, you look at this and say, he said, I, you know, but you produce a fruit that will last. How much of our fruit lasts? So he's saying, see, this is what he's saying to you. He's talking to us. And then the Father will give you whatever you ask. What is the last two words in that sentence? In my name. In my name. You see, we don't ask. And that's what I want to put instill in all of us is to ask. And, 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 and you keep thinking, well, God's not interested in that part of my life. Want to bet? If you were going over to, to Oakland, you would be making bets, right? Well, I want you to think about being a gambler on this side, and guess what? Your returns are awfully strong, all right? The odds are strongly in your favor. And so when you say it, it says, so in, in, in my name, you ask for this. And so we have this, you know, most of us have problems uh, that are from poor communication. You, no, that's something else. Don't worry about that. Thank you. We, we, we have it, you know, but 
as vital as our communications is, guess what else is, comes all this? When you have communications, what do you have? You have relationship. Even with our mask on, we can, can we can communicate. Even with our mask on, setting at six feet social distances, we can still have relationship. We, but that's what we have, and this is what prayer is all about. When you and I are are dedicating our lives and our prayers, an act of dedication, it's an act of communication. Then we're building a relationship with God, and that's what God gave us and invited us to be a part in prayer. If we have to be there, it's a relationship. So. And then when you look at, so what is our relationship? You look down there, and that's what it says. You do this, and that's for it in my name. In other words, you and I have cultivated. Don't be, don't be Quakers on me now. Don't just sit there and look at me from under your mask. Speak up. This isn't a Quaker meeting. This isn't a meditation or a hesitation. <laughs> this is involvement. And so I want you to be a part of it. And that's why I think it's important for us to think about it. So when we look at it, the Father will give us whatever we ask for in Jesus' name. But that's how we got to ask for it. Now, if Jesus is not our Lord and Savior, we're probably not going to ask God for anything in His name. We're wanting to pray. Do what? Speak up. I Take it off so I can I hear don't you. think they would even pray. Oh, they, they may not. All right. They may not pray. You know? And that's, uh, but a lot of people have got the misconception about prayer. Oh, I pray, but I never get an answer. But what we're really thinking about in seeing all of this is understand God may not answer right then. And if he isn't answering you right then, then we need to say, Maybe I need to rethink this. Maybe I need to listen more. Maybe I need to take that time when I finish my prayer to sit down, shut up, and listen. And that's one of the issues we have. And I told you about listening. Joy said, did you hear me? And I said, I heard you, but I wasn't listening. And there's two different things. You and I can hear God but are we listening to what God is saying to us? And, and this is what prayer is all about. Prayer isn't just you and me unloading on God. Prayer is us handling it out and doing it. So the third thing is if you act in prayer, uh, it, it is an act in, in our lives. Okay, are you with me? Well, you don't. But guess what this other act is? Well, that's, but that, that's true. In other words, God says not at this time. I don't know, but we'll think of it. Act of supplication. In other words, you've got an act of dedication, you've got an act of, of uh, communication, and then you have an act of supplication. You know what supplication means? It's in the Bible, but I'm going to ask you, but if, you, if I were to ask you for a definition of supplication right now, what would you say? Asking. What? Asking. That's correct. That's what it is. It's a request. And that's what it says. Uh, it says, do not be anxious about anything. Look at the top of page from Philippians. But in everything by prayer and supplication. In other words, pray to God, offering up your request to God, all right, with thanksgiving. And let your request, which is your supplications, be made known to God. In other words, that's where we are. You tell the the most exciting thing about prayer is God's way of letting us participate with and, and communicate with Him. In other words, and we get this supplication. And so we look at this and we're part of where we are in all of this. When you think on it and be a part of it, uh, that's where we are. Um, I was uh, looking at another one uh, back a ways. It was John. Somebody didn't have their Bible with them, did they? So look at John 14, uh, 12, right quick, and, get, and read it to us. I got it. You got it? Read it out loud. Take your mask off so we can hear you. John you're, 14, you're far enough 12. away, so read it loud. Very truly, I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact will do greater works than these, Woo. 
Because I am going to the Father. Woo! I don't know about you, but the first time I looked at that text, and I'll get to it in a minute, but when we deal with, we're dealing with an act of dedication, we're dealing with an act of, of uh, communication, we're dealing with an act of supplication. In other words, I'll tell you the truth. My Father will give you whatever you ask in my name. How many times have we overlooked that? In my name. We've overlooked it, right? Uh, and so uh, we, it goes on to say, until now, you have not asked. Uh-oh. You haven't asked for anything in my name. Ask and you will receive. You gotta realize that's in John 16. So you, I told you about that chapter. Uh, ask and you will receive and your joy will be complete. What if the answer is not what you want to hear? Is your joy complete? You see, we, we, we think it isn't, but it is. We have trouble accepting joy in our life, all right? And, and, I, and it says, I'll keep there. And it goes on to say, you don't have what you want because you don't ask God for it. And then in Psalms 145, he says, he fulfills the desires of those who reverence and trust him. Hard to do at times, isn't it? That's one of the things we have. Where he goes on and says these things in our lives that we have to be able to be a part of. Uh, you know, I will give you new hope to your life. I will give you help. I will give you uh, uh, finances. I will give you jobs. But you've got to ask for them in the name of Christ. And when you get your jobs and you and you've got to go to an interview, you got a job. Do you ever walk out after the interview and say, "Thank you, Lord"? Amen. Amen. Yeah. I remember going to the University of Arkansas when I worked for Whitaker Corporation, and I would interview graduates about going to work for us. In other words, I was a recruiter, and I've often wondered. Matter of fact, I was there while they were they were filming, and, and, and Gregory Peck walked by me when he was playing Abraham Lincoln in that movie, right? <laughs> and he walked right by me, and I, you know, I thought, whoa, okay. But anyway, I've often wondered, all of those students that I've been interviewed, one of them went to one of our daughters that knew and said, your dad blew me away. <laughs> well, I probably did. But I wanted to, but after looking at that young person's resume, looking at what that person has accomplished, I wanted that person to expand and, it, and build on it. Uh, and, and I don't I don't think he was there. I, 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 that was one of the issues. But I often wondered, when they leave here, do they walk out and say, thank you, Lord, for getting me through this? You know, I, I, I've been there. I've done that, all right? So we did. So he said, I'll fulfill it. And he goes on, look at the psalm, it says, delight yourself in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. Do you believe that honestly and truthfully right now do you believe it? I'm seeing all of this. I don't see any of this. I do. Yeah, and, and, I, and I'm praying that that's what it was. Now, and when you think of this, you see, what are you lacking right now because you haven't asked for it? You have to ask. And when you think on that line, uh, those are things that are there. It, 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 you have to ask for a lot of things in our lives. And they are things that really and truly mean things to us. In other words, you got to realize in conversation, God is treating you and me as a friend. <coughs> do you classify him your friend? Or do you just classify him as God Almighty, Father of the Lord, Savior Jesus Christ? In other words, at times we think he is Almighty, but he's really saying, I'm your friend. Trust me, you know, that's one of the things we have. So this third supplication, this request gets, and we get to, to uh, we have to learn to request. How many times did your children ask you for something? <laughs> many times, but why? Why were they asking? Because it was what they were wishing to get, all right? And so we, we don't, we sort of say, oh, okay. 
but we need to be there. We need to be involved with it. Uh, did you realize that, look at it, uh, somebody got your Bible, look at James, the fourth chapter, the second verse, uh, and just pull that one up somewhere real close, and we'll look at it. I want you to think about it. Uh, you have not because you ask not. That's what it's going to tell you. But listen to it. James 4 2. Who's got it? I do. Read it. Uh, I thought I did. Yeah, there it is. You want something and do not have it. So you commit murder and you covet something and you cannot obtain it. So you engage in disputes and conflicts. You do not have because you do not ask. All right. Okay. And all of a sudden, I don't know about you, but he's walking all over me. And that's a, that, that's really and truly saying some things to me. Do you realize that in the New Testament, there are 20 times it says ask? We don't, we don't think of that, do we? I love, I don't know if you ever remember Dr. Spurgeon. He was a 19th century uh, minister that was quite famous and did a lot of things that were in England. But he, he wrote something that I think you ought to write it down and put it on your notes to have. Listen to what he said. God never shuts his storehouse until you shut your mouth. <laughs> so what does that say to you? But what he's saying to me is don't ever shut your mouth. Keep asking. Asking over again. So what can you and I do to, you know, to ask for? As it says, Psalm 145, 19. He fulfills the desires of those who reverence and reverence and trust him. And, and that's what we have to do. Or further down on your page, you got Psalm 37, 4. A, a lot of times you I want you to go back. How many of you write in your Bible? How many write in the margin? How many underline? I want you to take these and go back and let them become a part of your daily studies that you have in your book and underline those in your Bible to make you go back and read them. Psalms 37, 4 in the NIV. You'll see it a little different in the King James. By the way, Sun, Saturday at 1 o'clock, I'm doing um, Carol Coburn's funeral. She's written it out. <laughs> she's written the song she's written the scriptures Look she's her. written almost to the point of how I'm supposed to stand and deliver okay? I love her she's really beautiful you know? but, she, but she, she asked for things in the King James Version <laughs> and one scripture was from the NIV the rest of them King James which tells me she's read them both mm -hmm. in her life but here we go and it's NIV. That delight yourself in the Lord, and He will do what? Give you the desires of your heart. And when you realize all of that, you know. In other words, what He's saying is delight yourself. And the, the habit, and uh, and we look at it, and then right below that, from Mark the seventh chapter, it says, "Which of you, if his son asks for bread, will give him a stone?" Now we all know this scripture, right? But listen to it. I want you to really know it. Or if he asks for a fish, we'll give him a snake. If you then, though you are evil, listen to him. He's talking about us, right? Though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children. How much more will your Father in heaven give good gifts to those who ask him? That's that three letter word that we fire away from. So, God delights in our asking. How many times have you ever thought about, well, I've talked to the Lord, but I don't want to burden you? You ever felt like that? It's too little. Yeah. Do y'all remember Bruce Almighty? Yeah. And he couldn't figure out how God could hear all the prayers and everything and how he handled it. I look at that and see, but God handles all of that. And he sees all of that. So we have dedication. It's an act of dedication. It's an act of communication. It's an act of supplication. And the one that you and I look and you turn on page 16, it's an act of cooperation. All right? In other words, you and I have to cooperate with God in all of this that we're doing. And so, uh, and, and so what it does is it gives us new hopes when we are cooperating. 
In other words, prayer is God's way of letting us partner with him to accomplish not my purposes, but whose? Yes. His purposes. Uh, and so we, we, that's important for us to think about asking. I want you today and, and write down somewhere and think of one specific, were you with me? One specific thing that you can ask God for and the uttermost, and don't worry about it, just right into between you and God. And so delight yourself in doing it. But think of one specific thing that you have to, that you'd like to ask God about. And so God wants to answer our prayers, all right? So the next time, over these next 40 days that we're in the midst of all this, uh, get ready and, and ask. And it's like John 14, 12 says, I tell you the truth, anyone who has faith in me, uh-oh, will do what I have been doing. I look around and I'm seeing a lot of that not occurring, even in the church. All right? You got to realize, I live in a glass house. So I can throw the stones and they break whatever they are. He will do even greater things than these because I'm going to the Lord Father. That, that passage used to drive me crazy. I couldn't grasp it. How in the world could I do greater things than Jesus Christ? Now think about where Christ was when he was saying this, right? He was human. He was there in one spot. He couldn't be in America. He couldn't be in India. He couldn't be in Africa. He was in that one spot doing his miracles. So what he say, and I had trouble with that. You know, getting ready for that. But look down in the next two verses. They answered my prayers, all right? And I was able to grasp it. And he goes on to say, I will do whatever you ask in my name so that my son may bring glory to the Father. You may ask me for anything in my name and I will do it. In other words, we can look at verse 12, the verse 13 and 14 gives us the ability to do greater things. Now, I, I know, have you ever thought about the fact that you've done something greater than Christ has done on earth? Now, we're, I, I realize we're super critical of ourselves, okay? We're not there. But he goes on to say, your prayers release the power of God into the most hopeless situations. And we're in a hopeless situation almost right now in COVID-19, aren't we? By the way, did you realize that when this is over with, 19 principles will come out of COVID-19. I'll talk about that later. Think about it. Though. They can, you've got to realize that when you and I, prayer can penetrate places where no, I love this, no man or woman can go. In other words, you and I can pray for another nation. We can pray for that other nation. They don't even know we're praying for it and they can receive the blessings of our prayers for it. We can pray for another nation. That's what he's telling us to do. In other words, though this is get ready to do that and ask for it. We can pray for it. Whether that's, a, 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 in a way, if it's closed international borders that he's talking about, or if it's the hardened heart of a skeptic. I've seen more of those than I've seen closed borders. You're right. But prayer makes, I love this, the impossible possible. Now, but you gotta, but you must understand, we must have dedication, we must have communication, we must have supplication, and we must have cooperation for all of this to occur. It's not gonna happen overnight. And so it goes on in, in Proverbs, and I just love it. The king's heart is in the hands of the Lord. He directs it like the water course wherever he pleases. How many of you have ever played with making water run in a different direction as a kid? Do you remember how you make the stream? You know, I was looking at a space shot of the Amazon the other day on the computer that the ESA satellite was showing. 
and showed the Amazon River, which the Amazon River is longer than it is from New York to Paris. Wow. All right, that's a long river. But it was looking at the bow lakes, like we have on the Mississippi. How many of you have been on bow lakes around all up and down the Arkansas, or the Mississippi, the Arkansas River? Because it changes channels and moves. You see, God is directing us just like that. There's places he's moving us away from and left them there and carrying us like the river on down the direction he wants to go. Thoughts? <clears throat> All right, don't be quick. All right, turn to page 17, and here's where it comes to fun. Now, this is yours. This is not mine. But, in other words, it, it, I don't feel like you're pressured to discuss any of these. And you can look down and see what they are and choose which one would be whether for you. You don't have to read all three of them and try to answer them, but look them down and see what. For instance, the last one says, what are you hoping to get out of this study for 40 days? All right? What are you hoping? Write it down. You know, tell me right there what you want to get out. Not what Bob Marble wants to get out of this. What do you want to get out of it? All right. And then think about it. Right? Today's lesson about the purpose of prayer. Well, how does that how does that deepen your conversation with God? In other words, when tomorrow or today or this evening, or if you do your time this evening with the Lord or in the morning, how deep is your thoughts going to be with the Lord? And so you look at that. In other words, that's the role that we're looking at. And then on, on page uh, 18, I'm just going to direct you through this because we're going to get to more details on it as we go along. But putting in practice. How many of you played basketball? How many of you shot free throws? How many shot 100 free throws before you stopped? What does it do? You, you, you get to the point, it's practice. All right? I was listening to somebody say to me a while ago, my mind doesn't function like my muscle remembrance does. <laughs> I was listening to our granddaughter that lives in Marseille, France. She and her husband have a new car. I, all of a sudden, I've got something jumped up here. Okay, so let me get it off. Okay. Blocking me out. I don't know it doesn't show down here. Yeah, there I am. I'm back. Uh, it was McAfee trying to jump in. So anyway, but she and Mary, uh, Mary Catherine and Antoine are getting his mother's car. It's a little van in France. It's standard transmission. transmission. <laughs> and so she's got to drive that. How many of you remember driving that before we had automatic transmission? I mean, I drove a school bus. Do you think a school bus had an automatic transmission when I got on there? And I learned to double clutch. You remember learning to double clutch and you were shifting your gears? I, and so it's going to be interesting to see. And, and she's done this before, but all of a sudden it's like, uh, remember said to me a while ago, my muscle remembrance is better than my mind remembrance. Because I haven't driven this old truck in a long time. But when I got in it, it was, it was like, I had been there, you know, it was all this memory because it wasn't my mind working, my muscles were doing the things. And so what I want us to do is I want to build our prayer muscle. I want it to become that kind of thing for us. And I want us to put it in practice because the more you pray, the more you practice, the better you get at it. Some people, how many of you like to pray in public? Mm -hmm. How many of you have ever been anywhere and they've asked you to pray and you've been caught off guard? I was at a Zoom circuit elder meeting last week. And as the DS was finishing up, he said, uh, Brother Bob, would you close us with prayer? Well, you know, you know me, I'm never going to sit down and shut up. You know? So I, I said, okay, fine. But I know a lot of people that says, don't ask me to pray. Yeah. I remember as a kid, we used to have Sunday lunch. Do you remember families doing that? You know, all the family get together, and, we, and the kids always had to eat the far end. They never got to eat the big table. And we always got the north end piece of a chicken flying south. You know, that's it. But anyway, I remember my grandmother saying to my cousin's father, uh, Solomon, would you offer 
the blessing or the grace. Well, I thought John L., my cousin, was going to fall out of his chair. <laughs> and, I, and afterwards, I said, and Sullivan started praying. And John said, John L., what in the world was wrong with you? He said, that's the first time I have ever heard my father pray. Ah, so I don't want that to happen to us. I want us to be able to have no fear of, because there are no wrong supplications. There are no wrong, wrong requests. Yeah, God's going to look at them and say, are you serious for asking this? <laughs> and, I, and I've actually had God say that to me. All right? And I've said, well, no, that's right. So I want us to think about it. And, and, and in our group, I want us to pray together. All right, I want it to be a part of. It. I'm going to close us out with prayer, but I and I'm not going to force you to pray. But I want us to be able to part that it's part of us. The prayer is there, and I want it to become a daily prayer in our lives for us. And I want you to take note. Uh, uh, praying together is one of the greatest privileges of a small group. By the way, this is the size of a Wesleyan End class. All right, uh, you realize John Wesley put the small groups classes together long before New Life Church or Saddleback Church, which now has, would you believe, 30,000 small groups. Wow. But they, it was not, they, they took what Wesley would say. When you and I, if we'd have been in Wesley's time, would have had to gone to a class meeting and then given a certificate that we went to the class meeting before we could walk into worship because we had to hand it in at worship. To let them know that we have it. That was what was required at that time. But unfortunately, we don't do that anymore. But daily prayer, I want you to, to, to you know, set, it says here, set your alarm uh, if you want to do it in the morning, or set your phone to do it at some time during the day. And let your phone go off and you say, well, somebody says, what do I do? I'll be back. I've got to go talk to the Lord. And, and go spend some time. And then I want you to write notes about it. I want you to read this and see about it. And I want you to take it. You got in here on page uh, 21. Look what it looks like. Look what it said. What does it say? Daily prayer, Daily prayer journal. All right. Now that's yours. That's, I don't, I'm not going to look at it. That's between you and God. That's that's it. And so uh, I, we, I want you to take that. You know. And he said uh, when you start this, find your Bible verse. All right. And, and it's got one. You know, there to begin with. He's got John. Uh, 13, 3, oh, excuse me, 15, 5 through 7. And then he asks you the questions. And it's day 1 through 7 until you come back next week. All right? And you'll look at this. And so when you realize this, uh, you know, what decisions do you make in all of this? And how do you get together? And uh, so any thoughts? Anything you want us to lift in prayer right now? A couple of things I'm going to throw out to you. How many of you remember Bonnie Masur, Linda Keel's mother? She's in stage four cancer. Mm. Not doing well. Uh, a very good friend of ours, his mother, he grew up with our son. Uh, he used to own, down there where Everett is, he used to own that dealership when he was, when it was Brett Morgan's, all right? So you know Brett and Joe come over here. Uh, Joe's wife Judy is having radical mastectomies, uh, bilateral, uh, this coming end of the 28th. So we're going to lift her in prayer. How are the others? I have on our prayer list, we know we got Carol Coburn's family. Uh, we've got, uh, as I said, she got one on Charlie Eagle, who has a, a heart procedure tomorrow. I wanted to also bring you up on that. Uh, and we got Lisa getting ready to have a, a, a joint replacement and Eddie to have one. So there's a lot of prayer requests that go up. So uh, I got let us, one. Uh, I got one. Uh, I uh, just come to the doctor today. I got a shoulder separation. Yeah, you were talking to me about this Sunday. What did he tell you? And I, uh, I go the next Tuesday for the MRI. Uh -huh. And Wednesday at this time, I meet him and they decide what they're going to do. But the, the pictures they took and looked at today, no arthritis or nothing. He thinks it's just a cut. Kathy Sue? She's not listening. She must have, you ever turned off? No. She on? Kathy Sue, you have a prayer request? I don't hear. Can you hear? Yeah. 
Tell me what it is. I don't hear you, Kathy Sue. Talk to Lisa. And we'll put those on there. Because if we if we wondering where God is wanting us to take his church, then we're gonna to have to ask him for what is it? Yes. Some issues. I did send it on email. Tell okay, you had some issues. Uh, one of the issues is his hemoglobin is eight, oh. uh, and, and you know mine runs fifteen. Uh, so you can imagine, <laughs> Joyce runs twelve. And so you know, you know, a man as tall as big as Bill, but the hemoglobin is eight. You don't move around. Well, so there's some work to do. So they, they went and got him. Had to take him because he fell and hit his head. Well, they're very private. They're not going to talk about us. Right. Well, that is Yeah, that's what they took him in for. He's okay. He's back home. They got to decide when they're going to start doing the IVs, giving the blood transfusion. Let us be in prayer. Almighty God, as we come and take this moment and take this time in our lives. To learn to ask in the name of Christ. I want us to be able to see the breakthrough in areas in our lives. I want us to be able to understand what you are involved with our lives and the relationship that you want and have with us. And let us help us become knowledgeable of it and recognize it for what it is. And may we dedicate our lives and our prayers, and may we also take and communicate with you, because we have fallen short on all of that. And a lot of times, Lord, the only time we talk to you is when we're in trouble, and we ask for your prayers. And it's sort of like, Lord, we no longer pray in school, but we do know that a lot of prayers are offered up during test time. And you're smiling and understanding of all of that and answering those prayers. And we ask you now to be with those we've lifted up to you in this hour. Be with Gary as he's going through what he's walking through. Be with Lisa and with Eddie as they are looking at joint replacements. And be with Bill and what he is going through. And, and be with Bonnie as she Bonnie Sewer as she is fighting this horrible cancer. And we ask you to be with her. And, and be with Judy as she goes through her surgeries and we pray for great success and all of that. And we ask you now, Lord, to lift everybody up and hold us up and get our attention and make us well. And may we cooperate in all you're asking us to do. And we give thanks to you this day. And in your holy name we pray. Amen. 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 Have a great week. Thank you. Thank you. And you've got homework, my wife just said. And you've got and you do. It's not my homework. I gotta do my own. You gotta do yours. So uh, are you what do you think of this book? I like it. It is different and it's nicer.